next talk will be given by Lev Davida, who works with Professor Smirnovich at the University of Cincinnati. And Lev will tell us about characterization of transition metals substituted titanium loaded mesoporous molecular sieves. Good morning, my name is Lev David. I'm uh, the chairman of the University of Cincinnati. Uh, we'll shift gears a little bit now because uh, my work is on uh, environmental catalysis and uh, the second thing is uh, contrary to most of the heterogeneous catalysis uh, community, we do reactions at uh, room temperature. Although the primary focus will be on characterization, we'll uh, discuss the application a little bit, which is uh, photocatalytic degradation of or organic matter in uh, uh, water and gas. The, there are advantages of this method, which is, uh, as I said, room temperature, complete oxidation to CO2 and water. Uh, it's uh, non-selective. However, uh, the, the best and uh, the most studied for the catalyst CO2 uh, requires ultraviolet irradiation, which is uh, expensive and uh, it is uh, harmful to humans. Therefore, it would be desirable uh, to make a catalyst capable of utilizing visible light, uh, which is uh, that doesn't require uh, special sources of. Uh, radiation and uh, is uh, benign. Uh, we will try to use transition metal incorporated in CM41 uh, materials uh, to achieve that goal. We'll see that uh, when we combine these materials with the TiO2 maker composite catalyst, uh, we can utilize visible light to perform uh, photocatalysis. And uh, we'll go extensively into uh, characterization of these materials. More specifically, uh, we'll discuss synthesis methods, uh, crystalline structure, uh, uh, metal dispersion, and other methods of characterization. Primarily, TPR will give us a good insight on uh, what's going on. Briefly, how photocatalysis takes place. This is a TiO2 particle most studied and uh, well-known uh, photocatalyst. It possesses semiconductor properties, uh, which is bent gap. Uh, when we shine light on it, uh, we promote an electron from the valence band of the semiconductor to its uh, conduction band. Uh, electrons and holes are can uh, travel to the surface of uh, the particle and produce radicals, uh, OH and uh, O2 radicals. Uh, these radicals can attack organic matter in either uh, gas or water uh, and uh, non-selectively destroy it uh, to CO2 and water. What can we do to expand the working range of a photocatalyst. Uh, first approach we can follow is to uh, dope it, as any uh, electrical engineer would do. Uh, implant a uh, foreign metal ion into the semiconductor, and uh, this creates uh, two uh, energy gaps instead of one. Uh, two gaps of smaller energy which can uh, utilize uh, two smaller energy or higher wavelength photons and achieve the same result as creation of one hole and uh, one electron here. An alternative approach could be is called sensitization and uh, here we don't really dope or implant anything or modify uh, the particle of the photocatalyst itself. Here we just uh, load something onto it. 
and that something uh, should possess also uh, uh, semiconducting properties. And uh, in this case, uh, we can uh, achieve the charge separation in TiO2 in three steps, again uh, absorbing uh, two photons of low energy, which will correspond to visible light. We have done this with uh, MCM 41 based materials. <coughs> uh, we used a standard uh, conventional method of uh, synthesis. Uh, MCM 41 materials have a tubular pore structure. It's essentially amorphous silica with a well defined uh, cylindrical pores. And uh, we used a number of uh, transition metal precursors uh, to be incorporated into MCM41 during synthesis. Uh, we concentrated on chromium, iron, and uh, vanadium as uh, our uh, metals to be incorporated, hopefully, in the framework of uh, MCM41. And the second part of the composite catalyst is uh, TiO2, which was loaded from an uh, organic precursor, titanium is a propoxide. Let's look at the crystalline structure as reported by, as recorded by XRD. Uh, we observe uh, a peak, large peak at about uh, 2.5 uh, degrees to theta and uh, the other two peaks uh, which are also observed on any uh, MCM41 based material. Uh, however, the values of these peaks, uh, the absolute values are lower than uh, reported for standard silicious MCM, uh, apparently due to the inclusion of uh, foreign transition metal ions into the uh, framework of MCM41. Uh, this range 20 to 30 was recorded in order to see if there are any well-formed uh, crystals of uh, the transition metal oxides in, uh, inside these materials and we essentially observe that uh, there are none. Let's now see the BET and uh, metal dispersion. We obtain values comparable uh, with uh, those found for silicious MCM, values of BT surface area. Uh, but when a transition metal is incorporated in the framework, the BT area is lower. Uh, another thing to observe here is that uh, we record peak pore size for silicious MCM, which is uh, 42, nanom uh, 42 angstroms. Uh, however, when we incorporate transition metals during synthesis, uh, the machine records higher uh, peak pore size. Although we use the same uh, uh, template, we still get a higher pore si uh, peak pore size. Apparently, the presence of uh, um, pore metal ions actually hinder the formation of pores and uh, we apparently have uh, uh, some pores which are uh, not well formed or walls are uh, simply speaking broken and uh, we get higher pore size. Uh, when we load the second component, uh, naturally the peak pore size uh, goes down. Uh, then uh, when we compare metal dispersion, uh, the method actually gives uh, overestimates uh, significantly the metal surface area because of the stoichiometric factor we use, uh, but it still provides a good uh, qualitative measure. Uh, when we load the second component for all catalysts, uh, the metal dispersion goes down, but uh, for iron substituted samples, uh, it goes up uh, by about 30-40 percent and uh, what it tells us essentially that uh, the second component titanium actually enhances the dispersion of iron 
inside MCM. Uh, let's now see if uh, these materials are good candidates to work in visible light. Uh, 400 nanometers is uh, actually the threshold between ultraviolet light and visible light. And our composite catalyst, as we see, absorbs significantly in UV uh, due to the presence of TiO2. Uh, but we also observe some uh, absorption in visible, which doesn't take place for pure TiO2. For pure TiO2, uh, these, these curves would go sharply to zero at 400. If we zoom in on uh, the visible part, uh, we observe that the absorption is uh, still substantial up to uh, 6700 nanometers. Let's now see the photocatalytic activity. Um, as a benchmark, as a comparison, uh, most photocatalysis researchers use uh, Degussa P25 uh, titania powder. It's pure titania uh, containing about 75% uh, of anatase and 25% uh, of rutile. Uh, as we observe, uh, this commercial powder doesn't uh, perform any degradation of uh, formic acid to CO2 and water in aqueous solution. Uh, it does perform in UV as well known and expected. And our composite catalyst, uh, it starts out equally active um, with the commercial powder, but uh, deactivates. Should be noted that uh, at the beginning we have a comparable activity of commercial powder in UV uh, with our powder invisible. So we really achieved something here. Let's now test other reactants. Uh, if we test for the degradation of 4-chlorophenol um, to CO2 and water again, uh, we observe only marginal conversion for uh, uh, p 25 invisible and again we observe comparable conversion at the uh, first 60 uh, minutes for uh, P25 in ultraviolet light and uh, titania on chromium MCM in visible light. If we remove the chlorine from phenol and try to photodegrade phenol, uh, we don't observe um, a comparable activity. However, we observe uh, sustainable activity, which is also important for uh, commercialization and if we put more chlorine on our probe molecule uh, we also observe a sustained, uh, sustained uh, reaction for a long time although this shows 180 we ran for 6 to 9 hours and uh, did not observe the activation so as we see uh, Titania loaded chromium MCM for the catalyst uh, proved to be active. What about others? Uh, we tested iron and vanadium MCM41, and uh, for iron observed marginal conversion and uh, no conversion at all for vanadium. Let's take a closer look at uh, the uh, Chromium MCM specimen since it was the most, or by far the most active. Uh, first, we can compare diffuse reflectance spectra of uh, materials of different uh, preparation methods, but uh, exactly the same composition. The bottom curve is Chromium MCM41, is, uh, which is active, and the upper three curves our test materials which were not found uh, to be active. Uh, as we observe, uh, there isn't much uh, difference uh, on the UV spectra. When uh, we load 
the second component TIO2, we have essentially the same picture, uh, which is uh, the spectra are only due to the composition, and uh, they don't differ much or at all uh, with uh, the preparation method. If we compare now our materials with uh, pure oxides of chromium, we can actually elucidate the nature of the peaks and shoulders on the specter and as we observe uh, at 375 we have a peak due to uh, CRO3 and uh, we have a shoulder at about 450 which is due to CR203 so this hints at the possibility of coexistence of chromium plus 3 and uh, plus 6 inside uh, the framework And with this we also can estimate the ratio of CR plus 6 to CR plus 3 and we observe that it's about 80% uh, of the uh, chromium is in CR plus 6 form. To summarize UV spectroscopy, uh, where our materials absorb invisible light and uh, they still absorb invisible light when we load TIO tube. We have coexistence of CR plus 3 and CR plus 6. And we have uh, uh, similar absorbance by mixed oxides uh, depending on the composition. Uh, we did not find any evidence of CR plus 4, which was reported by other researchers. Uh, and as I just mentioned we have 80% uh, of uh, all chromium is CR in CR plus 6 form. And now try to analyze the reduction behavior and see the interactions of uh, transition metals with uh, the matrix and with the uh, TiO2 uh, loaded onto it. Uh, what we observe for uh, as synthesized uh, MCM41 materials, all of them, uh, regardless of the preparation or, or regardless of the incorporation of uh, chromium, <coughs> they all behave essentially the same, uh, exhibit the same reduction behavior. We have a significant peak at 440 degrees, which corresponds to uh, chromium going from plus 6 to plus 3. And we have a significant peak at 800, uh, which corresponds to uh, hydroxyl groups leaving uh, the MCM matrix. Let's now look at uh, our catalyst, our working catalyst. Okay, uh, here the behavior is uh, entirely different for impregnated materials which is curves E, D and C and uh, uh, transition metal incorporated materials which is curves A and B although all five have the same composition uh, the reduction behavior is very different uh, first of all we have uh, a peak at about 640 uh, which According to the literature, it can be attributed to uh, the transition of CR plus 3 to CR plus 2, uh, which cannot take place uh, inside the framework of uh, MCM41. Uh, these species are not, uh, CR plus 3 inside MCM41 is not reducible, and according to the literature. Uh, but when we load CIO2, they become reducible. And the curves B and A are our active catalyst, and uh, uh, the, the um, peak of CR plus 3 dog going to CR plus 2 is shifted to lower temperatures. If we deconvolute this diagram for our active catalyst, we observe that uh, it's not 640 when. Uh, uh, CR plus 3 goes to CR plus 2, it's uh, rather 
degrees C when this uh, um, uh, transformation takes place. We also observe a peak before 400, which is about 300. This peak corresponds to uh, purely TiO2. Uh, it's essential dehydroxylation of TiO2 that we uh, detect by the instrument, record by the instrument. <coughs> if we now check the spent catalyst to see if there is any hint of why the activation takes place during the degradation of formic acid. Uh, we see that the peaks uh, do go down with, 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 uh, after um, photo reaction uh, for both uh, uh, active catalyst, chromium incorporated MCM41 and uh, inactive uh, catalyst uh, BNC which were simply uh, impregnated with uh, chromium salt. For the other uh, two metals we tested, vanadium and iron, uh, we observe a number of um, uh, transformations. Reduction, reduction behavior is rather interesting, but uh, they do not uh, perform uh, photocatalytic reaction in visible light. Uh, to summarize our TPR, We observed two major peaks at 440 and 800. Um, the first one is uh, CR plus 6 going to CR plus 3. And uh, the second one uh, is hydroxyl groups leaving uh, silica of MCM. They, these peaks are different from individual bulk oxides <laughs> and uh, coincide with uh, chromium impregnated silicious MCM. When we load the second component, TiO2, uh, we observe enhanced uh, CR plus 3 to CR plus 2 transition. And uh, contrary to the first two peaks, uh, the position of uh, the, the temperature of such transitions is strongly dependent on the preparation method. Let's now see some XPS to, uh, to uh, elucidate what's going on the surface and uh, we observe interesting surface compositions of uh, yeah. um, S-synthesized chromium MCM and uh, figure B is uh, our composite catalyst which is TiO2 on chromium MCM. Uh, we do observe uh, peaks corresponding to CR plus 6 and CR plus 3. And we observe uh, a low surface concentration of these species. However, when we load CiO2, uh, the uh, concentration of surface chromium oxides uh, or chromium species increases significantly. The other thing to observe is uh, the increase of the content of CR plus 3, significant increase uh, in comparison with uh, a synthesized chromium MCM. Apparently, when we load CO2, we enhance uh, the diffusion of chromium ions towards uh, the surface of the catalyst. As to the o oxygen, uh, surface oxygen, we observe uh, only oxygen uh, corresponding to silica uh, on the surface when uh, uh, analyze uh, chromium MCM41 materials. Uh, apparently, the concentration of chromium, the surface concentration of chromium and chromium MCM41 is so low that uh, is not detected. However, when again when we load CO2, which is curve B. Uh, we observe uh, substantial amounts of <coughs> oxygen from chromium oxide. We also observe naturally oxygen uh, pertaining to CiO2 and we uh, lower the concentration of uh, silicon oxygen. 
uh, finally the last XPS uh, result. Again, curve A is uh, a synthesized chromium MCM and curve B is a loaded chromium MCM. And we observe significant lowering of uh, silicon when TiO2 is loaded. We can now hypothesize on uh, why we observe activity in visible light. We essentially have TiO2 on the surface, which doesn't work in visible light. Um, what is the role of MCM, chromium MCM41 that helps uh, TiO2 to utilize visible light? First, uh, from uh, literature and our own data, uh, we have uh, MCM pore wall uh, containing uh, chromium, some chromium inside the framework and uh, some chromium, uh, primarily chromium plus six, uh, outside of the framework. And uh, when we load the active component TIO2, uh, which is the bottom figure, and uh, we perform photocatalytic reaction, organic compounds uh, absorbing, we shine light and they transform to CO2 and water. Uh, when we load TiO2 on such material, we can have two types of interactions, uh, or so to speak, two active sites, two types of active sites. Uh, the first interaction is between uh, framework chromium and uh, extra framework titanium, and the second interaction is between extra framework uh, chromium oxide and titanium oxide. What it does, uh, the first active site, uh, CR plus 3 in the framework, can uh, uh, create an impurity level of in TiO2, which is this one. Impurity level is uh, something that allows uh, for uh, lower energy light to be absorbed and uh, excite uh, TiO2 in two steps uh, by absorbing two quanta of low energy light. Uh, and only uh, atomic distribution inside the MCM framework can do that. Uh, no uh, bulk oxides or mixed oxides that we've tested uh, uh, can uh, allow for such transition. And we have uh, extra framework CRO3. Uh, with extra framework CRO3, we can have enhanced uh, scavenging of electrons from the impurity level. Why it's important? Uh, many people who try to uh, implant uh, foreign metal ions into TiO2, they actually failed because uh, this level E2, E1, uh, actually traps electrons and the second transition uh, becomes impossible and essentially such photocatalyst cannot perform uh, reactions but uh, when we have uh, CRO3 in the, uh, available we can scavenge electrons from this impurity level and uh, free up uh, holes in the valence band of TiO2 which can become hydroxyl radicals and uh, attack organic matter uh, in the solution or in gas phase. To conclude, uh, we've succeeded to uh, use, uh, to harvest visible light for photocatalysis by uh, utilizing transition metal incorporated MCM41s. Uh, <clears throat> Only chromium exhibited a, a significant activity uh, for the photodegradation of organics. And uh, the reason of such activity is the coexistence of uh, uh, framework and extra framework uh, oxides with uh, extra framework TiO2. And uh, we have a redox cycle, essentially uh, we reduce chromia and uh, generate active radicals. We're uh, eagerly waiting uh, for response from our, 
from one of the national labs to do XFs uh, to actually prove or disprove whatever we've uh, hypothesized on the activity of uh, these materials. And uh, we're currently doing reactions in gas phase. Finally, I'd like to acknowledge our sponsors and uh, my collaborators of this work. Thank you very much. I'd be happy to answer your questions. Regarding the uh, the role of chromium three versus chromium six, I guess you explained that interaction between yeah. chromium three in the lattice in the framework and chromium six outside, yeah. and both are necessary yes. in your model. Uh, if you utilize a, another framework uh, instead of MCM forty one, one that would provide a narrower pore, then you would exclude w at least partially one of the species which would migrate to the outside of the granule in the zeolite, while the chromium-3 will stay in the pore, interacting with titanium, presumably also in the pore. Is, has that been done? Uh, we've done it somewhat differently. Uh, we performed reduction of the synthesized chromium MCM to uh, to get rid of all CR plus 6. And then, uh, although CR plus 3 is still there, no activity was observed. Uh, then we did leaching again and uh, did the same thing, trying to isolate the role of CR plus 6, CR plus 3. Uh, again, CR plus 3 alone uh, doesn't sen sen uh, sensitize TiO2. And uh, we also tried to synthesize MCM with CR plus 6 only, uh, precursor. And again, we didn't observe any activity. So apparently the presence of both species is necessary. But for, uh, I tried once on ultra-stable Y. I, di I didn't synthesize, but I did ion exchange. And with ion exchange, I did not manage to get any CR plus 6. All chromium left, uh, even after calcination, I had CR plus 3 only. It, is that mirrored by or matched by the vanadium behavior? That is, do you need B205? Uh, vanadium behavior I is different, it all goes to V plus 5 upon calcination. Uh, that's what we, 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 we saw. And uh, yeah, we see the absorption of visible light, but uh, we see no activity. What other, I guess this is off the wall now. I know that your work is degradation. Yes. <laughs> so you are... But yeah, I'm contradicting our keynote speaker. Right. We heard from Leo that maybe there's an incentive to do maybe a partial uh, degradation. For, for partial, actually, uh, some work has been done that... Uh, University of California at Berkeley, I think, they utilized uh, very uh, narrow pore zeolites uh, to do for the chemical, selective for the chemistry in visible light. So it is possible, yes. Is that still is, uh, uh, selective for the chemistry, I mean, uh, for example, they oxidized uh, uh, toluene to benzoic aldehyde which usually goes further when it's uh, uh, when there are no uh, space constraints when you've shown the consumption of your organic with the titanium with UV and then your catalyst with visible it looked like the consumption rates were pretty similar does that give you an indication of, of your Photon efficiency in terms of those two reactions, um, and are you looking at a catalyst that has a similar photon efficiency, even though it works in the visible range? Uh, yes, we're looking at similar photon efficiency. Yes, and even though you're talking about a two-photon excitation, excitation it's still uh, 
the energy of light is uh, lower, okay? And photon efficiency essentially energy is uh, uh, most converted per energy spent. Okay. So we spend uh, much less energy. That's why we have a similar comparable efficiency. Models that you presented at the beginning were based on, I guess, introducing some uh, impurity energy levels and a band gap. Yeah, uh, one of the models and the sensitization model. Um, do you have a, a good idea of basically the physical and chemical state and location of, uh, of transition metals in your materials? Are they extra uh, framework, uh, nanoscale kind of patches? Uh, how much of it actually is residing within the warm material? Uh, yeah, an approximate idea is, uh, well, I, I think I showed about 80% uh, of uh, chromium can be leached. So, although it's not uh, conclusive, but it gives an idea that about 20% should be in the framework. But this 80%, is it the uh, surface phase in, inside uh, the... Uh, now, or, or uh, we it assume it is a surface uh, um, surface patches, yes. But we don't know yet until we see accepts results. Any other questions? Let's not there again.